What's up everyone, Vu of Envu Films, and I am back with another video. And you guys already heard it yesterday, all 100 of the active YouTube douchebags, AK two douchers, talked about the FX30 yesterday. Some had it in their hands, some didn't, like myself, who's talking about the FX30, and I don't even have it. But I feel like I've been filming with Sony for long enough where I understand what the specs are, what the camera is and what it's capable of. And I'm gonna share with you my thoughts on it. I'm currently at a client shoot location, which is why I have this jankish hotel room. But I do have my lighting equipment with me, which is providing with the key light. And if you don't know, I'm having some motivated lighting action going over there. I'm not actually lit by that lamp, I'm lit by a Rotolite Neo 3 hidden out of frame, but that is neither here nor there. With the announcement of the FX30, I was excited and I'll tell you some of my reasons. But overall, I started getting pretty annoyed with some of the uh, tube douche reviews of my YouTube douchebag colleagues out there. And I'm gonna talk about it. First of all, the FX30 is an amazing camera, period. Okay, if you just look at it for what it is, even comparing it to whatever else is available in the market, uh, it is an amazing camera. It is literally basic of the basic explanations of what the FX30 is. It's an A7S III or an FX3 with a crop sensor with sharper overall video footage because 6K downsample to 4K with the capability of shooting 4K 120 frames per second with a massive crop. More on that later, but overall, fantastic camera. It could also shoot photos at 26 megapixels and it's getting its full 6K resolution down sampling to 4K from the 26 megapixel sensor. However, from what I've watched, you could only take single shots in photo mode in the FX30 which is fine, you know, if you're trying to get some like Instagram shots and stuff, but you're not gonna be able, you know, taking continuous shots of an animal running at you or a continuous shot uh, at a wedding uh, of bride and groom walking down the aisle and you're trying to shoot really fast. You could shoot one click at a time. Perfectly fine in most professional photography situations. Again, it all depends on what you do. One of the more annoying things I've been hearing about um, the FX30 and the shoot filming in APS-C is the fact that APS-C doesn't get the uh, bokeh or what have you that a full frame camera can get you, which is true and not true. And again, it all depends. Let's say you take a 35 millimeter lens and you set it at f2.8 on your full frame camera and you put that same 35 millimeter f2.8 on your APS-C camera and you stand at the same place and you take a video. The reality is the background blur of the two shots are the same. The one difference is the APS-C camera is just closer. And the reason why people say you can't get the same shallow depth of field on an APS-C camera as you would on a full frame camera is they're talking about when you're trying to match angle of view of the image. So in order to get the same angle of view on the APS-C camera as you do on the full frame camera, you would have to either one, step back. And when you step back, you lose that compression, meaning the closer you get to the camera, the more background blur gets because of that compression or whatever this is called, where you're close to the camera and the background gets more blurry. You lose that, so of course you're gonna lose shallow depth of the field. Or you would have to get a wider lens that once you apply the APS-C crop factor into that lens, it will match up with the 35 millimeter lens look on full frame, which you take, let's say in this case, you need 23 to 24 millimeter. And if you set that F2.8, obviously that 24 millimeter lens at F2.8 does not create the same shallow depth field as the 35 lens does. The wider lens you get, 
the less shallow depth of field you get if you're comparing aperture values to the same aperture values. And what I mean by it depends on what you shoot and how you shoot, what lenses are you, you're accustomed to shooting. Uh, the look you get from the APS-C camera and the full frame camera could actually just look exactly the same. It really depends on what you shoot. A lot of my two doucher colleagues actually just shoot on a 16 to 35 f2.8, 24 to 70 f2.8, or Tamron 28 to 75 f2.8 on their full frame Sony D bag cameras. So the reality is, if you want to mimic your 16 millimeter f2.8 on your APS C sensor camera, such as your fresh $1,800 FX30, you really just need an 11 millimeter f1.8 lens from Sony. And that look will be pretty damn close to your 16 millimeter f2.8 lens. Matter of fact, if you were to multiply f1.8 by one and a half, which is the crop factor of APS-C, you get roughly 2.7. And I know a lot of people say you shouldn't compare aperture this way because aperture is not necessarily just depth of field, shallow depth of field or whatever. It's actually the amount of light gathering you get. So yes, at f1.8, you are getting more light into your camera sensor than an f2.8 glass is getting into a full frame sensor. But in terms of just the look, you know, changing the shutter speed, ISO, whatever, to get the same exposure, you're getting pretty much the same look with your APS-C camera at 11-ish millimeters at f1.8 as you would a 16 millimeter on full frame f2.8. I hope that makes sense to you, right? And if you want the 24 millimeter look at f2.8, again, you just get a 15 millimeter and you set that at f1.8 and you can match your, the, and you can match the overall look of a 24 millimeter on a full frame sensor at f2.8. But of course the 15 millimeter Sony lens actually does f1.4. So that would look more closely to something like 24 millimeter at f2.2.1 on a full frame sensor. So this whole thing where you can't get the same type of look as you want on APS-C as in full frame, that is all bullshit iteration straight up. Is it easier to get more shallow depth of field on full frame? Yes, because there is a lens such as a 14 millimeter F 1.8 for the Sony, the G Master lens, $2,000. There's really no lens equivalent on APS-C to get you that look, okay? To get that 14 mil, you probably need like a nine millimeter at like F 1.1 or some bullshit like that. There is no such lens. If there is, it's probably an autofocus, etc. So in terms of wide angle, yeah, you, right now you can't get a zoom lens, uh, 16 to 35 or 24 to 70 range that could match the look of full frame sensor on your APS-C sensor. There is just none. The only way you could do match the look is you have to get primes. And unfortunately, that means swapping lenses in and out. And to be quite honest, I don't have a problem with that because I shoot primarily prime lenses and not zoom lenses. But if you are uh, accustomed to shooting with zoom lenses on the full frame sensor, then the only way you could match your look is to get prime lenses for your APS-C Sony. And there's plenty of prime lenses that could match that look for you. It's just up to you if you feel like switching lenses in and out. In my opinion, when you switch lenses in and out, you are more intentional. You have more focus on getting good compositions, good shots with the given focal length that you had set up for yourself. Uh, sometimes I've watched myself shoot with zoom lenses and I just zoom in and out way too much, but that's just me. Maybe some of you are better at controlling yourselves. Now, in the other spectrum, 
There is really no way to match something like a 50 millimeter F 1.2 G Master on your APS-C camera because you would need a 30 to 35 millimeter ish lens at like an F 0.5.8 whatever and there's no such lens as that. The closest you get to a 50 millimeter F 1.2 G Master look on your APS-C camera is probably a 30 millimeter, 35 millimeter F 1.4. And even so that is around like F 1.8 ish in terms of crop factor look, all that bullshit, all that math that you probably should or should not be doing. But I'm just telling you the overall look, right? So in my opinion, F 1.8 on full frame is a shit ton of shallow depth field. That is plenty. I actually don't even know any movies in cinema that shoot lower than F1.8 for shallow depth field. Only my D-bag does. I shoot the 50 millimeter GM at F1.4 for weddings. And it stays in F1.4 most of the day because I'm a piece of trash D-bag who just likes super shallow depth field for no effing reason. And again, that is neither here nor there. So basically, on your APS-C FX30 and any other APS-C Sony camera, you can match the full frame equivalent of F1.8 on most focal lengths, which means, so pretty much at 15 millimeter, 16 millimeter, 23 millimeter, 50 millimeter, and 85 millimeters lenses, you can match the full frame equivalent of 24 millimeter, 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter, and 85 millimeter at f1.8. So pretty much that's as, as far as I know, that's what you can match your APS-C APS camera to look like the full frame equivalent. And by that, I mean, you could buy the 14 mil, the 15 millimeter Sony lens at f1.4 or the 16 millimeter Sigma at f1.4 the Vilchox 23 millimeter at f1.4, the 35 millimeter G Master or Sigma 35 millimeter at f1.4, and the 56 millimeter f1.4 from Sigma, and those will get you those equivalent focal lengths at f1.8 on full frame. Make sense? Probably doesn't, but I hope you get my point. All depends on what you're accustomed to shooting with on full frame. If you're shooting at f2.8 most of the time, you could probably easily match up with your full frame cameras. Look on your APS-C camera. And if you're shooting f1.8 most of the time, you could also shoot, you could also for the most part match what you are shooting uh, on your APS-C camera as you would on your full frame camera. And on the wide angle side, uh, yeah, you're not gonna be able to get like super shallow depth field wide angle uh, but to be honest, most of the time wide-angle shots, you probably should be shooting at f4 or something because it's usually an environmental shot, a landscape shot uh, for a wedding with sort of establishing shot for the venue. So most things need to be in focus. So you don't need shallow depth field for that either. Um, long story short, the FX30 uh, is a beastly camera. And to be quite honest, as a professional, if I had three FX30s, at $1,800 each, I could have a very well, you know, perfect professional videography setup. And most part photography too. I could take 26 megapixel raw photos with that camera. And to be quite honest, the modern day sensor dynamic range on any photo camera these days is way more than you would ever need for any photography project. 99% of the time. If I had my FX30 and I needed two photos with it, let's say food photos, uh, yeah, I could definitely do it, no problem. Uh, if I had FX30 and someone asked me to take portraits and the FX30 is the only camera I had, yeah, I could absolutely take your portraits. And I would even go as far as wedding uh, photography. If someone, there, are, you know, bride and groom walking down the aisle, uh, with the Sony Rare Reliable Autofocus, I could just keep clicking like this and I'm sure every single one of those clicks will be in perfect focus. I don't have to sit there and burst shoot anything. Only thing I worry about is if they do a very fast first kiss, you might wanna burst, 
you won't have the ability to do that. But I do have some confidence that probably in October 2022, Sony will release the photocentric version of the FX30 A6 whatever, A7 whatever, A7000 or whatever, uh, that will have a faster shutter and all that stuff in like a more typical Sony A6600 like body with a viewfinder and all that stuff for probably, I don't know, 2000 bucks, whatever they sell it for, 1800. I don't know if it's gonna be more or less expensive than the FX30. My guess is it'll be more expensive just because it'll have a viewfinder. But that's just me. Yeah, I really don't doubt in most situations that uh, if the only camera I had was FX30 that I'd be able to get the same quality of imagery as I would uh, on my A7S III. The only time it will probably struggle a bit more is obviously low light. And that's understandable because you're talking about a smaller sensor for a bigger sensor. But in terms of overall look, I can easily get a full frame fame f1.8 with Sony APS-C sensor based on the lens availability we have. Uh, so yeah, that is that. Do I recommend you get an FX30? Hell yes. As a beginner, yes. As a professional, yes. And I don't know if a lot of these tube douchers are getting this information from like Sony rep about how the FX30 is quote unquote, you know, a beginner, uh, an entry level cinema camera. That is complete bullshit. That FX30 is a straight professional level cinema camera. And if you can't get professional looking cinematic footage, if you can't get professional footage with FX30, you are trash. Quite simple as that. Uh, you can agree with me, disagree with me. But yeah, I think it's fantastic for all of us. I think it's amazing that we have a freaking cinema camera that's capable of doing 4K 60p, 10-bit 422, 16-bit raw externally for the cost of a measly $1,800. A few years back as a videographer, like it was really tough because we're always complaining about our cameras. We couldn't get this, we couldn't get that. And then of course, A7S III came out and that was fantastic, even at the price of $3,500. Even the FX3 at, at the price of $3,800 or whatever, but now you can literally get an FX30 for $1,700. You get two FX30s for the price of one FX3. Who do you think will create better content? The one with one FX3 or the one with two FX 30s. Two angles are always better than one, but that is for another video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it was insightful. Hope it, it helped explain some things. And of course, I hope it helped you make a business or a purchase decision on whether or not you should buy an FX 30. In my opinion, it is a no brainer. You should get one, especially with my affiliate links below. Until next time, subscribe to the channel, like the video. It helps a lot. Lighten up. Quite literally, lighten up because you buy the FX30, it's lighter than any other Sony full frame. The lenses, APS-C lenses are lighter than most other full frame lenses. So yes, lighten up your camera and lighten up inside. People take things too seriously. Like my face. Looking serious all the time. The end. Hey man, you need more bokeh. No man, I think F1.8 is plenty. No man, that not enough. You need to be in F1.2 or F1.4 at the most. That's way too much blur, like only the nose is in focus, bro. If you want to be filmic, cinematic, and be the best at storytelling, you need more boca. All right, let me see what you mean. Let me show you. If you want to be the matter, you need to know. Lighting, it track composition, it track audio, it track framing, it track the bed, it the shallow depth of view. The bed, it the boca. Mata class on sale 199